So where's the office back at Division? You're in the office, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? What time is it? <laughs> I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. Now Myers should win the league, yes! And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Damn, Dad! Well, hello and welcome to the Below the Rim show. Show dedicated to the BBL. It's me, Pabs, on my own, just with one of our uh, player interview type shows post game uh, from the Plymouth City Patriots versus the London Lions game that took place this evening, Sunday evening. The sun is starting to set in uh, Cornwall as I head back home. Um, and I was really lucky tonight because the Lions, bless them, had booked a train. How blast! I think I asked. Josh Ward Hibbert this, you'll hear it later on, but how uh, how uh, presumptuous is that to book a train pretty much an hour after the game's meant to finish? And the game went on for a long time as well. There was plenty of fouls, but Patriots made a game of it, cut it to within six, but the Lions, just too much quality. They're such a good team. But I was very lucky um, tonight to talk to a couple of the guys. I was trying to get Robert Youngblood again, but I think he was ducking me. He gave me a big wave when I walked in the arena, but... Um, Wojtek Ruban, who didn't play in the game, but travelled it. And, and you find that as well. There's a lot of players that aren't playing in the game. They still travel with the squad, rested or not. Sam Decker obviously was there as well tonight. and I, did, I had an opportunity to, to chat to him, but I, th- I thought I'd give him a break after we badgered him after the uh, Cup final. Um, so Wojtek Ruban will be up first. We've got Josh Ward-Hibbert as well, uh, where we talked a little bit of tennis. Uh and then um, Joe Hart from the Pats, um, we had a little chat with him as well. well quite a long chat, actually. Got onto beards, um, as you do, but you'll hear that as it comes up. And then um, Deuce as well. We managed to get a word with Deuce. I didn't get a word with LVC this time because some of the feedback from that chat with, with V was odd, to say the least. It was a tweet in our Twitter feed saying that he'd... People think he thought he turned his back on the fans. Or so. I mean, I listened to it back and I was like, where on earth did you get that from? Because the guy, obviously distraught, a little bit frustrated at losing so heavily to, in the South West Derby, which nobody wants to do. But then, I, it's just weird. And it's, I, some basketball fans are odd. I don't get it at all. I mean, if you, someone can highlight to me where they think, for any instance, he's turned his... I mean, the very suggestion... Bearing in mind, I've had to stand for 15, 20 minutes after the, probably longer than that, after the game, while he makes his way round 150 fans who've stayed behind. I mean, they're three or four deep all the way around the barrack, all the way around the, the billboards, all the way under the basket. For somebody who's turned his back on, on the fans, he signed an awful lot of autographs and took an awful lot of selfies and in, interacts with fans incredibly well. So, I mean, that was what a bullshit comment that was, whatever that was about. Um, but I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but some people's opinion is bollocks. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to this evening's, uh, or say this evening, depends when you listen to it, doesn't it? But let's move on to the interviews I managed to get post-game. Um, let's have Mr. Hraban first, who prior to me interviewing did hit a bit of Spanish on me and said, no, I, no, <laughs> no, no speak any Spanish. And I was, he said, I forget what he said now, but basically alluded to not speaking any English and tried to run away. But he was very, uh, very gracious, very nice of him to to spend some time with me after the game. But listen to that first. No game for you tonight. You enjoy it? Uh, I mean, I enjoy it. Uh, it was a nice game, nice flowing game. You know, it was a lot, yeah. of, lot of good, uh, good offense in the first half. Then second, it got a bit ugly. A lot of calls. Uh, both teams were a little bit struggling with the defense in the end, and uh, the games got sort of uh, long and 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 uh, and hard, hard fought. But in the end, you know, we get a win, so I enjoyed the game. You know, it was uh, it was big crowd tonight. People, I think people people like the basketball. So in the end, it was a good event. Do game. you feel like when you're when you're on the benches, do you feel like you want to get involved and help the team? Obviously, the comeback from the Patriots was pretty good. It's down to six points. Is that tough for you to watch? Oh, every time it's a torture. I hate that. I hate, hate, <laughs> especially if it's a, it's, it's a close game. Uh, you got a lot of twitching in your hands. Like I want to be there, but 
uh, sometimes it's simply not your night and you, you need to let the other guys have a go. How do you like Plymouth? Uh, Plymouth is a beautiful city. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, Arena is pretty nice. Mm. Uh, it's not bad, is it? We, I mean, we say it quite often. You need to come down and experience a game down here because it feels like a bigger arena. It feels like a big arena. I mean, for fan experience, it's pretty nice. Player experience, it would need a little bit for. It's pretty hard and, yeah. and uh, unforgiving. But otherwise, I mean, uh, it was a good event. Yeah, good. Thank you. I mean, have you have you found the BBL this season? You enjoyed it? Because obviously, Europeans, the yep. it's kind of the biggest thing for you guys. I, I realize that. Yeah, but I, on the, uh, I was very surprised by the uh, level of the BBL. BBL players, especially. I mean, yeah. these guys know how to play basketball. They're tough. They're uh, athletic. They have skills. There is a less, uh, less, let me say, uh, system and X and O's than, uh, mm-hmm. than the rest of Europe. But it's, it's a nice, nice league to watch. It could use with a little bit of uh, improvement on the venue side, but I think that's a process. And obviously, uh, but not here. <laughs> not here. Not here. Yeah. If if, if, my, if the floor would be a bit different, like wooden, that would be perfect, perfect place to play. So you, like, I mean, in terms of uh, of what you've come up against and the players you've come up against, any players stand out for you in the league in general? I don't just mean tonight. I mean in the league in general. Uh, as an opposition, as an opposition. I mean, I like I like Leicester. Yeah. Their style of play. They are they are closest to like European style. We we get to play against. Uh, match up wise, is there anyone? Match up wise. Uh, I mean, King from Bristol, pretty good player. Yeah, you got yeah. like a lot of guys. Sloan from Caledonia. Uh, yeah, point guard here. I can't uh, get a name. Lefty lefty guy. He, here. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a solid solid guy. He's yeah. got a shot. He's got a penetration. I mean, the league's got a lot of lot of talent. Uh, it's sort of because there's not enough uh, European competition or like comparison mm. is a bit lost in a context of European basketball. So I think I think uh, with a with a time with more time it could if, if it get a little bit more exposed it, it could be like taken like seriously very seriously. Well, thank you very much for talking. We're very lucky to have players of your caliber to come in our league, and we really hope you stick around. Uh, you know what? I would love that. But we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, thank you very much. No commitment. <laughs> Thanks very much. Sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. So there we go. He's impressed with the BBL. And a lot of people are. There are a lot of people are shocked by the sort of standard of, of player. It's 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 a really under the radar league, but there's some talent here, and and you know it's referred to by a number of these guys you speak to. But uh, thank you, Mr. Hraban, for speaking to me. Uh, and then who walked out of the change rooms? But Mr. Josh Ward Hippert, and he was wearing a a quite nice London Lions puffer jacket, which a number of the players around him were saying, "I need to get one of these." And, and was again very kind to to give me a little interview. I started off, obviously, where well, you'll hear it by talking a little, a little bit about tennis. Then it's all basketball and a little bit of tennis at the end. But uh, thank you to for Josh Wood Hibbert and enjoy. We we talk a lot about you, but we talk about tennis quite a lot, which oh, is weird. Because really? well, one of our guys, Grant Young, he's a, he's a tennis coach as well. Okay. So we, we we obviously know you from the tennis world. But I'm mean, tonight, and I'm surprised. I said it on the broadcast. I do the commentary. I'm surprised when people are surprised how good you are, man. You, you, you've obviously been a part of this Lions team for a couple of seasons now. You get the chance to play, and you play well. Yeah, you know, like, I try not to worry too much about what other people perceive of me. I know, like, my abilities are my game, and I know how good I can be. And especially in a team, like, so star-studded as we've got here, you know, it's, you know, it's not easy to, you know, find a minutes, but... Like today, if I can get a, a few of them minutes, I'll you know try and do the best yeah, I can with them. Do you guys feel much pressure this season? Because obviously, it's almost like all eyes are on the Lions. If you like, you guys are uh, you're up there on a the pedestal. Teams are going to try and knock you down. Do you do you feel the pressure much? You look quite calm. <laughs> yeah, I think um, obviously, I think anywhere if you're number one, I think people are always you know you know want to take you off your top spot. I think with that said, I think we're aware that probably most teams when they play us, it's they're going to give us their best best shot and they're going to be you know pumped and psyched to uh, players but except from that I think you know we we worry about what we've got to do and how we can play our best basketball and try to put it on the court and live and die with however it turns out well you put on a pressure form for us tonight did you feel much pressure when the guys were coming back at you because got got it to a six point game at one point yeah like you know, they, they started hitting some shots but um, again like me personally I believe in believe in the team I believe in the guys individually and uh, I, was, I was confident I would pull through with uh, knowing what we can do you've played here a few times well, how, does, how do you think this arena compares to some of the other arenas around the country? I think it's a great arena. The atmosphere is always great. Uh, fans always come out and show love for the team. And especially today, like when it gets to a you know, tight game or they get a few uh, good buckets, like, they're loud. So like, it's definitely you know, one of the better ones. And I always enjoy coming down here. 
Do you enjoy the journey? It's a long way. <laughs> hey, it's, it's a tough journey. It's a tough journey, but when we get here, it's, it's all smooth. It's all good. Well, you guys are trying to get a train right now. How blasé is that, by the way? Booking a train. We could be in overtime right now. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's not on my side, you know? Like, yeah, I just do as I'm, to- do as I'm told, to- do as I'm uh, meant to be, but I'm sure if, um, if anything like that happened, you know, we would adjust accordingly, but, you know, it's, it's not like that, like we take anything for granted. I think it's more just on the planning side of things, they just... The, I guess the backroom yeah, staff yeah. have just got to do what's best for the team and Definitely. yeah well we're lucky to have I, look, I said earlier when I was interviewing for Ravine we're really lucky to have the calibre of, of overseas players coming we're also lucky to, to retain players like yourself yeah. that know the league that are very high calibre players and, and knocking on the door of a GB call up surely yeah I hope so I mean been doing it for a bit and I'm you know obviously like trying to put in the good performances when I can I mean obviously like them kind of decisions are out of my control but I'm hoping to keep putting good performances and hopefully like people will will see that and recognize that and hopefully like there'll be a call up in a in maybe a few months or a few years we'll find out hopefully hopefully your name's in obviously recently there's one coming up we haven't talked to any do you still play tennis not too much. When I if when I cancel, has anybody asked you that this season? Nah, not this season. You know, <laughs> normally like that comes up like regularly, but nah, not this season. I think like, obviously like especially this year with how many games we've got, it's so hard to find like time to do anything, let alone like play another sport. So yeah. it's a bit tricky. But during summertime, like get a little bit of time off. Definitely like to get back on the tennis court and just you know feel my way around it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I think for now it's quiet. But come like May June time, I'll probably pick a racket again. Nice, good stuff. Well, thank you for sharing time with me. Good, safe journey home. Well played Appreciate tonight. It. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. There we are. So again, I mean, obviously he's been down to pavilions before, but mention of how good the arena is down there and the atmosphere and that, you know, it was a tough game. Um, and don't sleep on Josh Ward Hibbert. I, mean, I said it on the broadcast. I'm surprised when people are surprised how good he is. Like he, if you're, you know, he played for the Riders. If Rob Paternostra wants you in his team, and and I think it was a couple of seasons he spent there, he's got something about you. And then to to be at the Lions now for for a couple of seasons, they've kept him around for a reason. He's he's a he's a big dude. He can play multiple positions. He's strong, good shooter, and showed tonight his defense was outstanding. He um, yeah, he was very kind to talk to me, and uh, obviously we talked a little bit about tennis at the end, and he wants to, to you know, well, I, I wanted to say about his Wikipedia um, <clears throat> page, which I think still has him as, the photographs are all tennis related, but um, thanks to him anyway, that was that was cool. And then we move on to Joe Hart. <clears throat> Comments were made regarding the fact that we were both together having a chat, and, and we both have beards, which, you know people do nowadays get get over it um but yeah he was very gracious again and and, and good good enough to give us his time he was worried he's going to get into trouble at the beginning <laughs> like uh as lvc it certainly or, or seems to have managed to get some negative feedback from that i, I still don't know how but anyway let's uh, let's let's hand over to joe hart so it is hard to, to, to find the identity, but like I said, I think we are starting to figure it out a little bit. And after a performance like this against uh, a really great team, you know, um, hopefully we can carry that defensive identity through and, uh, and carry it on to the trophy next week and then on into the, the rest of the season. What are these guys like in training? Because I know like, we see them on the court, they fight fighting, they're feisty. Is it the same kind of atmosphere in training? No, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's the nature of the sport, isn't it? When you're competitive, it's not like you're just going to go to work Monday through Friday and be nice and chill and turn up on, on Sunday uh, afternoon and flip a switch. You have to be competitive all week. And this group is a very competitive group. You know, we battle every day in practice. Um, and I think that's starting to translate into how we play in the games. Big question, though, is is your fitness. Now, you're moving around a lot better than you were. There's no crutches anymore. <laughs> I mean, we've not seen you yet kick the uh, water butt over in frustration at some of the refereeing decisions, but how, how are you getting on? Uh, yeah, I'm, d- I'm doing all right. I think uh, I'm about to be at week 18 post-surgery, uh, running on an anti-grav treadmill, Ooh. doing a little bit of low, low-intensity low plyo. Um, so yeah, uh, from my understanding, the rehab's going well. It's just it's a long old slog. I've still got another four or five months to go. Um, oh, too, see, that's too many because we we've been making sly under the under the table bets on is he going to be back for playoffs? Is he going to? You know? Well, the the thing is, w- with the timing of the injury, right? Having it happen literally three days before preseason started, yeah. in my mind, it kind of was like, no, there's no way. Had it have happened 
in June or had it happened in May, then in my head I would be having end of the season in my sights. Yeah. Um, but I just think from a longevity standpoint, from a health standpoint, um, not worth it. Not worth it. And I, I don't... I, I'll be clear to play in nine months hopefully I, I won't be ready to play I'll be cleared to play I don't think I'd be ready to compete and to contribute at this level um, but you know that's by the end of that and the start of next season I'll be good to go so that's well the team has missed you it's one of those things that almost goes under the radar when we talk about injury problems and things that the Patriots have had this season starting five player in yourself it's a big loss but it's looking good though yeah no well firstly thank you so is yours um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's tough. You know, I think we had. Uh, I think. I think one thing I bring is a sense of calmness and collectedness yeah. to when we play, and I think that's really been missed this year. Um, you know, but again, the guys are starting to figure it out now, and hopefully, you know, come back next year, hit the ground running, and, and everything firing on all cylinders. The way we finished last year, the way we're hopefully going to finish this year, yeah. and carry on going for Patriots. I've not spoken to you since Christmas. Did you get any good beard kind of stuff over uh, Christmas? Just, just your bod standard, um, <laughs> like bulldog, a uh, bit, yeah, yeah. bit of uh, moisturising cream, bit of beard oil. It's just like we spoke about before. It's just the maintenance is a hassle, isn't it? Like if you oh, leave no. it, for, if you leave it for a couple of days, then. Scruffy yeah, yeah exactly. Scruffy. But I'm, I'm trying to stay on top of it at the minute, so it's, it's going well. Well, well. we'll have to start a new weekly show, just just beard maintenance. Oh, definitely, man. Get me back on the podcast. <laughs> we'll, we'll chop it up again. We'll talk all things beards. Um, I actually have a straight razor now, so I'm going to start lining Ooh, myself up. Nice. So if, if you see me walking around with cuts on my face, it's because I'm not good yet. But <laughs> nice. That's the, that's the I don't have one of those. I, well, maybe I need to get one of those. No, I think I think it like uh, it definitely increases your length of your lines and like how long they stay. No, nice. but I I, I've used that. I've used definitely. it I've used it a couple of times and it is the razor are very very sharp. So like a little <laughs> little slip and there's definitely a big cut there. So it's not something you leave someone else to do. Oh, I don't know if I trust them. Dangerous, no, dangerous. None of these guys anyway. I wouldn't trust any of them. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. We'll uh, we'll get you on the show soon. Yeah, for sure, man. Anytime. That's what the fans need chat about beards beard maintenance deadly serious about us having a little corner of a show maybe maybe we have beard corner where we talk about beard products we've been given and uh yeah beard maintenance but that whole thing you know about identity and and the team uh, trying to find itself it's you know it's a new team essentially when you change the core core three players (coughs) excuse me and three players come in and it, it it's different. It's all new. It's all pre-season. They start to put something together tonight, though, which is exciting. But let's uh, go to the, the Patriots, probably Patriots player of the game, I would have thought. I hope so. 25 points and six uh, six rebounds, if I remember rightly, from Deuce. Hell of a night from him. Um, yeah, and he was kind enough to speak to me again. Always Collier. Always managed to get you. 25 points tonight. You, you're turning in some performances, man. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was quite excited to play the London Lions tonight. Um, they're doing a great job in uh, um, the EuroLeague and yeah. just a good job in the BBL this season. And uh, it's funny because uh, last time we played Bristol in London, it was the same weekend, like mm-hmm. kind of like this, but I was terribly under the weather. Uh, I didn't really want to make a big deal out of it. No, we are but, under, yeah. uh, you know, I just wanted to give my team my best effort. But the first two times we played them, I mean, the first time we played Bristol in, in London, I was completely under the weather. And yeah. I... I couldn't really do anything. I had the energy to rebound. I had the energy to get up and down. Completely and different. I kind of just you know, kept that in my back pocket. Like nah, yeah, next yeah. time I play these two teams, I'm gonna give them my best ever. So that was kind of the motivation for for well, me you, tonight. You said on Friday night when I talked to you, you you want to prove that you are still the best big man in this league. And tonight, mm-hmm. you most definitely put a, a stank on that. Yeah, I just you know I, I don't really pay attention to the, the social media noise, but I, I know. When I'm not playing well, people are chattering. And oh, really? Yeah. So well, I'm not seeing that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm doing the Michael Jordan thing, making it personal and <laughs> making up things. Nothing and, wrong with that. You know, making it personal so I could play a little bit better. But, yeah, uh, you know, I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of my team as well. We could have easily uh, oh, mate, folded again and, you know, uh, dropped our heads and say, oh, poor us. Mm-hmm. But we kept battling. Jawan had some good buckets late. Um, Ty played consistently well. Mm-hmm. And, I think that's good for us moving forward because we're just fed up with losing. It's no, it's no fun for anybody. No. So, um, and we, we we learn to take care of the ball. Like I think like once again, turnovers hurt us, and we could just keep it to single digit turnovers and play with some, a little bit more energy and effort. I think we could at least move up on the table uh, as the season progresses. Well, it was a great effort tonight. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you, Pablo. Appreciate it. He had some feedback as well after the uh, LVC Dusha. Um, part of the podcast 
uh, they really enjoyed apparently they sat around and listened to it they really enjoyed it and, and had a laugh to it um, but there you go we're trying to try and bring you I mean it's obviously when you when you interview guys after the game you're going to get a bit of chat regarding the game and I, I, I don't know if that's the sort of thing you guys listening one it's obviously an insight which is great and, and how, how these guys think and, and what they thought of the game but definitely going to try maybe do it the other way around maybe try and get some interviews before the game starts so that we can ask silly questions not silly questions but you know different questions regarding to you know life maybe lifestyle how they're finding life in in Britain for some guys life in the BBL for others and we'll see what we can get in fact if you're listening to this tweet us at below the pod some some question ideas whether you want quick fire sort of questions uh, what was it called Match or Shoot magazine back in the day favourite food favourite TV show that kind of stuff or or what you want me to ask these guys because it's ultimately it's for you guys listening but uh, there we are thank you for listening we're going to record the show Monday probably maybe Tuesday night because I'm working tomorrow which is Monday and it'll be a bit of a ball lake trying to record that so we may go Tuesday night but anyway until next time we meet take it easy speak to you soon <laughs>